Hi everybody, this is God Sad for the Sad Truth. I wasn't planning on posting a clip today, but then I read a headline wherein uh, the 2017 Nobel Prize uh, winners in physics were announced, uh, one of whom is Kip Thorne. And uh, I have a personal anecdote to share uh, regarding a cab that I recently shared with Kip Thorne, and then we engage in a very interesting, albeit too brief, conversation. Uh, so this really will constitute the, the, the key impetus of today's uh, clip. But before I do that, I thought that I would share with you uh, other brushes that I've had with uh, either Nobel Prize winners or uh, folks who might eventually win the Nobel Prize. One of the wonderful and humbling uh, factors in or realities in being a professor is that I get to hang out and interact with all sorts of brilliant uh, folks, whether it be brilliant, budding uh, future academics, you know, students, graduate students, but also, of course, uh, established uh, scientists and academics. Uh, and so it's a, it's a truly wonderful life because you're always surrounded by great ideas, great minds, uh, creative people. And so uh, I truly feel fortunate for having had the career that I've had so far, and I uh, look forward for it to continuing uh, for many, many more years. But in any case, my first formal brush with a Nobel Prize winner was in 1993. I was a doctoral student at Cornell University. My uh, doctoral supervisor, Professor Jay Russo, is a very well-known uh, psychologist and uh, behavioral decision theorist who's very much, uh, uh, you know, a key figure within the behavioral decision making uh, paradigm. And uh, so he, he knew many of the pioneers of the field, including uh, Herbert Simon, who was the 1978 Nobel Prize winner in economics. Um, and uh, Professor Simon at the time was uh, visiting Cornell and uh, I had the chance to very briefly meet him. Uh, and then I even had a memo that was, uh, I still have the memo, I have to find it somewhere. I need to frame it at some point. Uh, I have a memo wherein uh, Professor Simon is uh, weighing in on some of the work that uh, I was doing at the time. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and I also have a, a signed autobiography of Herb Simon, which was given to me by a then uh, fellow uh, doctoral student from Brazil, if my memory uh, serves me right. So that was one interaction I've had with a Nobel Prize winner. Uh, of course, Daniel Kahneman, who won the Nobel Prize in 2002 uh, in economics. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Kahneman and Tversky, Tversky regrettably passed away uh, in 1996. And so he wasn't a co-recipient of the Nobel Prize. But Kahneman and Tversky are two of the leading figures in terms of demonstrating that humans don't uh, behave in ways that are uh, in accordance with the uh, axioms of rational choice. So an axiom of rational choice would be if I prefer car A to car B and car B to car C, then I should prefer car A to car C. That's called the transitivity axiom. And if you don't uh, adhere to that rule, then you are engaging, quote, irrationally. And so Conrad and Tversky demonstrated that uh, people uh, hardly adhere to these axioms of rational choice. Now, I think I might have met very briefly Professor Kahneman at a conference once when I was, I believe, maybe a doctoral student, perhaps at Berkeley in 1992, uh, or maybe, I'm not sure, I can't remember if it was Tversky, but I do know that my supervisor you know, knew them very well. My supervisor's first published paper ever, I think in 1969, was with Amos Tversky. So that's the second link I've had with a, a Nobel laureate. Uh, I've also chatted with, oh, the third uh, link that I've had with a Nobel laureate was, this is actually a, a truly beautiful story. Now, I, I'm ashamed to say that I don't remember the name of the uh, Nobel winner in question. Uh, but I remember that he was at Rockefeller University. I, I could probably easily go back and try to find out who the gentleman was. Uh, I had watched a clip uh, on some television show wherein the 
the Nobel Prize winner in question was uh, talking about how he he brings his uh, dog to work uh, to his lab and so on. And so I had written to him uh, at the time. I think I was at University of California, Irvine. I had written to him uh, jokingly saying, well, you know, I've you know, you bring your dog to uh, to your work and you won a Nobel Prize. And uh, I've been known to bring my dog at the time I had uh, our Belgian male shepherd. He has since passed away. Uh, I, so I said to him, I wrote to him, well, I bring my dog to, to work, so can I assume that I will be uh, receiving a Nobel Prize soon? Of course, I was, I was joking. And he was lovely. He wrote back to me, uh, just lovely sense of humor, uh, just truly touched that, uh, you know, he would uh, return my, you know, unsolicited humorous email uh, to show you how some of these great folks are truly quite humble in their uh, orientations. Uh, and then more recently... I wrote uh, to a uh, uh, yet to win a Nobel Prize, Gilles Brassard, who is at University of Montreal. A few years ago, there was a big buzz that he might be one of the core recipients of the Physics Nobel Prize for his work in quantum computing. And so uh, the, the night before the award was, uh, was announced, I think this was maybe in 2015, if I remember correctly, I had written to him saying, hey, you might by tomorrow your life might change and so we went back and forth and had a you know very nice exchange uh, so you know this is my small you know minimal brushes with the, these wonderful minds but now to return to Kip Thorne in 2015 I had the the, the, the honor and, uh, of having been invited by uh, Dr. Andres uh, Romer uh, who was the founder and organizer of uh, the Suedad conference. Uh, this is akin, if you'd like, to the TED conference, the TED global conference that is held uh, every year. And, you know, many speakers are invited to, 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 to address a truly huge audience. I think it's the biggest audience that I've ever addressed uh, live. I think it was something in the order of 5,000 people. And at that conference was Professor Thorne, uh, and so at one point, we were catching cabs uh, to head out to some event, some gala. I can't remember exactly what it was. And so I get into a cab. Here's Professor Thorne. Uh, we sit together in the cab. At that point, I didn't know. Uh, perhaps I should say I'm, uh, I'm ashamed to say that I didn't know who he was. And uh, so we struck a conversation. I think maybe the cab ride lasted 10, 15 minutes. And when I found out that he was... Um, you know, at Caltech, he was a physicist. So the first thing that came to mind, of course, was, oh, Caltech physics. So did you ever know, did you know, uh, did you overlap with uh, Richard Feynman, who, by the way, for those of you who don't know, uh, was himself a Nobel Prize winner in physics. I had read uh, Professor Feynman, Feynman's uh, book, Surely You Must Be Joking, Mr. Feynman, uh, which I thought was just a brilliant book. Uh, I love the fact that this very, very serious scientist uh, who, by the way, also has links to Cornell, uh, was also, you know, a, a partier. He loved to have fun. He was, he used to, you know, dance, he, you know, like a real, a real full rounded individual. In any case, here I am asking Professor Thorne uh, whether he knew uh, Richard Feynman, which of course turns out that he knew him very well. He was a, 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 a I don't think I'm, uh, wrong in saying that I think they were, uh, you know, pretty close uh, friends and colleagues. And so I was blown away by the fact that uh, here was this uh, physicist who, you know, had a very uh, intimate personal uh, relationship, both professionally and personally, with uh, Richard Feynman. And so we chatted about a whole bunch of things, and then that was it. And since I've always wanted to invite Professor Thorne to come on the show, and then now I find out that uh, he just received the Nobel Prize. So it's, it's become even that much more urgent to hopefully convince him to come on my show. For those of you who also don't know, he was uh, an important player. I think he has executive producer credits on uh, the 2014 uh, Interstellar movie that came out uh, with, you know, starring many famous actors. So in any case, that's my uh, story with this year's co-recipient of the 2017 Nobel Prize uh, in physics, Kip Thorne, 
with whom I had the distinct honor of sharing a cab ride. Let us hope that uh, uh, he might remember uh, the fact that we shared the cab together, although I suspect that uh, my sharing a cab with him is a lot more memorable to me than vice versa. There you have it, folks. I hope you're having a good week. I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.